It's the king of the gut punch here, the hawk. Now, for any of you who've watched my recent Halloween special, the keen eye amongst you may have noticed that a certain casket-themed TNA match was not included in the list. And that was deliberate, like a brick to the head. It's been a while since I've done a pay-per-view review, so today, grab a cider, a zoo, a Xanax, but make sure you put a handkerchief down because the seats are filthy. Shove it or love it. Destination X 2007. More like Destination Ass. Straight away, we're in the impact zone, so it's an instant jab to the jaw. The opener is a ghetto brawl, Homicide and Hernandez versus Team 3D. For some reason, the gold is not on the line here. It says that the Dudleys are with someone called Johnny Rods. <laughs> He's not even there, though. Team 3 destroy LAX straight away. Devon hits the Spinebuster on Homicide. He quickly turns it around with a DDT on Devon. Hernandez starts using his power game on Bubba. Then out of nowhere, Hernandez leaps over the top rope onto Devon. Love it when he does that. Weapons come into the match now and we head into the crowd. The comrades team think the crowd are smacking Homicide, one of their idiots. There's one sort of spill in the crowd. Even Bubba looks confused about what happened. It's quite a fun crowd brawl because everyone seems to be involved and the crowd are energetic. They do eventually get back to the ring where Homicide hits the weakest trash can shot I think I've ever seen. Even Devon's annoyed by it and he slams Homicide hard for it. Hernandez completely overpowers Devon next. If anything, this match has just reminded me how high TNA's hopes were for Hernandez. That very man impressively pulls himself up onto the top rope, but his showing off doesn't help him as he gets a trash can to the face and a suplex. Homicide is back now and he snaps off a diving Huracarana. He also launches a trash can at him for a two count. Brother Ray is just too strong and fat for him and he overpowers Homicide as the Dudleys hit what's up. The Dudleys start drinking and celebrating way too early. Brother Ray has a nice Sandman throwback tribute here. The Dudleys set up a table when they're suddenly swarmed by about six Latino Nation members. The earlier mentioned Johnny Rods now lumbers down to the ring and he somehow takes out all of the men on their own. What pussies. Homicide eventually shuts him down. Now, what? Devon's brothers from Brooklyn, as they're described, swarm the ring. I wonder if they legit are his mates. If it wasn't chaotic enough before, it certainly is now. The Dudleys hit the Doomsday device on Homicide, who incredibly kicks out. The Dudleys then hit a 3D on Hernandez, but it's not over as Machete, who remembers him. He pulls the ref out the ring. Everyone's still fighting around the ring, and Brother Ray dives onto them on the outside. Now, completely randomly, Alex Shelley is here with his paparazzi camera and he smacks Devon. Shelley climbs up top and hits a frog splash through the table. A great opener with a stupid ending. This one gets a C. In the back, Rhino is admitting that he's scared of his match tonight and says he won't end his promo saying gore, gore, gore. That's probably because he won't be able to do a gore, gore, gore in the match he's having. Well, we'll see if that's possible later on. The gimmick matches continue now. It's a double bull rope match. James Storm, who would arguably have his best year in TNA in 2007, teams up with Jackie Moore. They take on Petey Williams and Gail Kim. Gail is Storm's former manager before she was replaced with Jackie Moore, and Petey was just standing up for Gail. Gail's hair is a thing of pure beauty here. It's truly a masterpiece. Shame it's about to all get pulled out by Jackie. Gail and Petey hit double scoop slams. Petey ties up Storm, so Gail gets a free slap. They go outside the ring again where Gail launches Jackie into the ramp. Storm continues getting beaten up in wacky ways as he gets clotheslined out of an office chair. Gail gets Jackie tied up around the ring pole as Gail slaps her. Call of the night is Don West saying that Jackie has a bit of cushion protecting her. Storm's in the ring doing laps around the referee of the rope which helps him get the advantage as the crowd chant kill the cowboy. Storm starts tying up Petey in the ropes but he's stupid and gets a rope break because he tied him to the ropes. Gail and Jackie still seem to somehow be tied up to the ring post on the outside. Back in the action, Storm hits the eye of the storm, but he doesn't try very hard with the cover. Storm acts like he's going to hit a Canadian destroyer, which Petey reverses with the worst bat body drop I think I've ever seen. Petey's back in this match now with multiple rope whips to the cowboy. He even gives him rope burn on his nutsack. Petey hits a really cool cradle DDT for a two. The women are finally back in the ring. They must have been so bored tied to that pole for five minutes. Oh wait, they have a double down, thanks for coming. Suddenly Jackie smacks Petey in the nutsack which enables Storm to hit the last call for the free. But did Gail break up that pin before the free? You tell me. It was a pretty funny match, but it was nothing worth watching again. The women barely did anything, it's a D. In the back, Scott Steiner is flirting with the generic blonde interviewer. He says Kurt Angle's going to find out that his love is sensational, and his wife already knows that. Christian suddenly bursts in, panicking that his running buddy Tomko isn't here tonight. He wants Steiner to have his back in his match, but Big Papa Pump isn't interested. 
Christian says he's got another idea and he drags the generic blonde away. Match three is a cross face chicken wing match. It's Austin Aries, then going as Austin Star, versus the Warrior Senshi. Warrior, Warrior, Warrior. I showed you all five of these, and every time you say Warrior. This one's happening because TNA keeps having loads of wacky skits involving Bob Backlund and their paparazzi productions. The Warrior starts out with some big drop kicks, but he fails on getting the submission on. Senshi just keeps trying. This is actually a submission match, but they can only use Backlund's finisher to make the tap out, so it pretty much ruins the match stipulation. Senshi is all over Ares in this one like a bad shirt until Ares turns it around with a back scratcher. Ares gives him a northern light, but he can't get the chicken wing on. Austin also hits the gutbuster backbreaker into the pendulum elbow. Bob Backlund appears, which distracts Ares, and Warrior scores a cartwheel kick. The Warrior continues the kicks, but he still can't apply the submission. Then it looks like the Warrior misses a kick, but he beautifully kicks back at Austin. Warrior's really rolling here as he throws Ares across the ring and hits a powerful running drop kick. He wants to hit the Warrior's way, but Ares shoves the ref into the ropes and then he hits a suicide dive to the outside. Back at the ring, Ares hits a corkscrew dive. This one's really starting to heat up. Ares gets a submission on, but low-key makes the ropes. Backlund is really distracting Ares and the Warrior rolls him up and puts a submission on and Ares taps out. This really wasn't as good as the early X Division days, but I wasn't expecting it to be either. Bob Backlund wants to shake the Warrior's hand after the match, but out of nowhere Ares attacks Mr. Backlund and puts his own submission on him. So I guess both men got something out of this match. It was a bad first five minutes and a good last five minutes, so it's a C. In the back, AJ Styles is saying he isn't scared of Rhino in their match tonight. He's just being wacky as usual. Christy Hemi is out now, who has recently debuted in TNA. She wants the women in TNA to get more camera time, but Road Dogg and Billy Gunn are sexist and don't agree with that. Billy's just terrible on the mic at this point. He says Christy's like the pimp on his ass that won't go away. He thinks it's still 1999. She has a mystery team to take them on. It's Antonio and Romeo, the heartbreakers who had a blink and you'd miss it stay in the WWE. The crowd chant at them, go away. Road Dogg is just having fun with Antonio. He runs away to his part like a little girl. The crowd start chanting, you suck dick. Romeo hits a head scissors from the corner, but Billy Gunn drops him on his face and gives him a drop kick. The highlight of the match is Romeo missing a dive to the outside and his partner doesn't really catch him. Later on, Christy smacks Billy Gunn in the nutsack, but it doesn't hurt him because he has a cup on and he rubs it in her face. Billy Gunn spanks her, then Lance Hoyt, who has a tramp stamp, carries her away. The camera practically goes up her asshole. The heartbreakers almost put away Billy Gunn with a double flatliner, but he kicks out. The match then turns extremely slow and boring. Romeo tries to throw his partner into Billy Gunn, but he misses and Mold Dog gets in. Moldy throws one heartbreaker into the other and then he wins with the pump handle slam. A pointless pay-per-view match. Christy Hemi reappears with a riding crop, but she doesn't hit him with it. It's a D. Backstage, Christian Cage has found the idiot abyss rocking back and forward in his cage. He's talking to him like he's a normal person, but he's pretty much out of it. He tells Abyss that he can be his family and he gives Abyss a picture of him. Abyss gives Christian respect, so I guess they're having an alliance now. I guess Abyss really liked that picture of Christian. Up next is a 2 out of 3 falls match for the X Division title. The story here is that Jerry Lynn, who was amazing in the early days of the X Division, packed it all in for a bit and was being a management figure. The champion, the cocky Chris Sabin, didn't like him, or anyone who he viewed as elderly for that matter. We got some hilarious Chris Sabin skits and promos. This was just before the Motor City Machine Guns. There's a two decade age gap between these two guys. Sabin's just messing around and he gets sent out of the ring. Lin starts chasing him around the ring and Saban cuts him off, but not for long. Lin hits the first big move of the match with a head scissors and a bat breaker. There's some sort of disturbance going on in the crowd which seems to be more interesting to the viewers. Saban starts doing better and he hits a knee off the ring apron. The crowd are really going nuts now, I have no idea what's going on. Saban tries to follow up a baseball slide but he gets dropped on the guardrail. Jerry Lin claims the first fall with a tornado DDT out the corner. Lynn celebrates by making fun of Chris Sabin and hobbling around. Young Sabin is really having a bad time as he gets a guillotine leg drop on the ropes and sent into the crowd. Jerry Lynn springboards into the crowd on top of Sabin. They bring it back to the ring, but Sabin shuts him down for kick. He tries the victory roll, but Lynn reverses it into a two count. Next up, Sabin hits a move that I've literally never seen him do before. Sabin's under real pressure and he almost loses to the sunset flip powerbomb. 
Lin then tries a head scissors which Saban reverses with a power bomb of his own. He puts his feet on the ropes to claim the second fall. To start the third fall, Saban gives Jerry Lynn a bat break and then Saban starts being an idiot. Lin almost pins him because of it. Then Jerry Lynn almost pins him again with a bridging German suplex. Saban takes his turn to come close with his cradle shock finisher which Lin kicks out of. Chris Saban wants to steal Jerry Lynn's finisher which he reverses and drops Saban onto the mat. I've seen this move a few times with Jerry Lynn and I have no idea what to call it. Christopher Daniels then randomly appears on the ring apron dressed as Sting which distracts Jerry Lynn. Saban hits Lynn in the nutsack and a second cradle shot for the win. Daniels then takes out both guys so I guess he's coming for the X Division title. This match massively disappointed me, I thought it was going to be match of the night, instead it was completely average. I don't know what went wrong, it's deep disappointing. Jim Coronet is in the back talking about what great match stipulations we have here tonight. On that note we're off to one of those matches now, it's the first ever Elevation X match. This one was apparently AJ Styles invention, according to the video package anyway. It's pretty much a scaffold match, it's Rhino versus AJ Styles. This one starts off on the floor which is probably a good thing. AJ hits Rhino with a springboard forearm from the crowd barrier. Styles now climbs up the structure but Rhino is scared. He does make his way up after a few minutes but he's still too scared. AJ spits on Rhino which causes him to man up and start punching Styles. Mike today is almost reaching a point of climax on commentary. The Rhino almost punches AJ off the scaffold a few times. AJ hangs on the bottom of the structure and then he climbs inside and hides. Rhino plods around the structure desperately looking for AJ. The crowd eventually help him find him. I wish I had more to say about this match but they can't do more than punches and kicks really. AJ tries to Styles clash in the middle of the structure which doesn't work. AJ then tries to throw powder in Rhino's eyes but he sees it coming and turns it around on Styles. With AJ blinded, Rhino hits the gore. So there you go, he can do it. AJ is just about hanging on still but Rhino eventually stamps him off. AJ crashes to the map but it doesn't really look that impressive. So yeah, pretty limited match but they tried a few things here. I believe this match only happened twice in TNA and there's a reason for that. Pretty boring but kind of an interesting spectacle, it's a D. In the back Kurt Angle is threatening Scott Steiner. Nothing funny happens though and the match is happening right now. Steiner is accompanied by two freaks which is something that didn't really happen in TNA. Kurt Angle doesn't have any freaks though. Scott Steiner has the advantage in the early going. Steiner shows Kurt his biceps but Kurt doesn't want to see them and he headbutts him. Steiner's busted open now. Angle throws the first suplex of the match then he sends Steiner out the ring. Scott Steiner is in his comfort zone now and he smashes Angle into the steps. They get back into the shove sided ring where Steiner eats a boot and Kurt hits mounted punches. Angle hits the second suplex of the match now, the back suplex but we quickly get more suplexes as Angle hits triple Germans. Kurt looks for the Olympic slam but Steiner turns it around with a belly to belly. Then Angle does hit the angle slam but Steiner kicks out. Kurt puts on the ankle lock but Steiner kicks him off and almost rolls him up. Scotty tries to put Kurt in the recliner which Kurt pretty quickly fights off by shoving him to the mat. Steiner tries the angle slam which doesn't really look right. <laughs> it actually looks more impactful than the angle slam. Steiner thinks it's game over now and he locks on the recliner. Angle fights it off and hits a second angle slam. The straps now come down for Kurt and he puts on the ankle lock. Steiner again fights it off and then he flattens Angle. Scott Steiner puts Kurt on the top rope and he's looking for a suplex which Angle fights off. He tries a sunset flip powerbomb. Steiner holds onto the ropes for what feels like an eternity before they kind of fall into the pin and it's over. Kind of a disappointing ending. I thought this match was going to be more violent and longer. It just felt like a match on impact. It's a D. BJ is back now with a miserable looking Samur Joe. He threatens Christian and the idiot Abyss and he says he'll end the night as the new champion. Now is the match I alluded to at the start of the video, it's the one you've all been waiting for. Sting has been trying to turn Abyss against Father James Mitchell and he disagrees with the way that Abyss is treated by Mitchell. It's revealed that Abyss shot his dad three times in the back when he was younger. This isn't the first time these two have faced off on pay per view, a month earlier they had a prison yard match, one of Sting's better TNA matches. So this one will be a last rights match, Abyss vs Sting. It's a glorified casket match, the difference is here that the casket is lowered from the ceiling instead of being at ringside. I guess they wanted to shake it up a bit. There's also creepy tombstones and candles around the ring. The match starts slowly with Sting hitting the first high impact move with an inverted DDT. Sting tries a Stinger splash but Abyss smacks him with a candle, not something that often happens in wrestling. Abyss then calls for the deathbed and all the lights start going out and smoke pours out and the casket lowers. The casket arrives in the ring as a loud fire Russo chant starts in the crowd. 
So it sucks, because as established in the last video, the coffin being in the ring ruins the match. It gets in the way. Sting is busted open and he's placed in the casket. This has two doors, just like the sunny Don't Look At My Ass Siaki casket match. Sting fights out the coffin, but he immediately gets a big boot. A tombstone is set up in the corner by Abyss, but he's distracted and Sting puts him in the Scorpion Deathlock. Abyss taps out, but the match doesn't end that way. Sting puts the tombstone on Abyss and smashes it with a baseball bat. Abyss is now in the casket, but Sting can't shut the second door. He chokes Sting out the coffin and delivers a choke slam on the casket. The fans now seem to have changed their opinion and they chant TNA. Abyss sets up another tombstone across two chairs. He tries to suplex Steve Border from the top, but he gets hit with a candle and he falls through the tombstone. Sting shuts Abyss in the crippled casket to end the match. The Stinger is relaxing on the coffin when the lights suddenly go out and the coffin starts rising up. He manages to jump off before it gets too high. I'm disappointed, I thought Stinger just invented a new way of reaching the rafters. In my opinion, this match wasn't that offensive. The crowd reaction towards Russo is not as bad as the internet will tell you. I heard maybe two fire Russo chants. I'm just calling it like I saw it. Anyway, the match was okay, it was pretty short and the gimmick weapons were dumb and they looked fake. I'm not going to put it in the shove it zone because I will see a hundred worse matches this year alone. It wasn't great, but at least they tried hard, it's a D. Just the main event now. God, this has been an underwhelming show. Christian is cutting a stuttering promo about all his mates bailing on his title defence. The great Muta then randomly walks in. Christian tells him if he wants to be famous again, he can always help Christian tonight. He sprays his mist all over the locker and Christian runs away dumping in his nappy. So for the NWA heavyweight title is Samoa Joe, who has a traditional Samoan performance before his entrance, challenging for Christian Cage's world title. Joe starts out with kicks to Christian's legs while he looks frustrated. Christian's a bit lost about his little friends at ringside and he's getting kicked all over the ring. Christian tries to dive which Joe telegraphs and he continues battering the instant classic. Joe boots him out the ring and he's in full control. Christian then starts arguing with the referee as he wants to use a steel chair and then he charges at Joe and gets a urinagi on the map. They spill into the crowd where Joe kicks Christian's head into a cardboard wall. It's an absolute state around ring after all the gimmicks tonight. Joe tries to get Cage into the ring but he hits a DDT on the ring apron. Christian Cage follows it up with a reverse elbow from the top and a two count. Joe then sweeps Christian's legs out but he misses the following splash. That would have been like a commercial skip falling on Christian. Joe randomly tries a muscle buster but instead Christian hits him with an inverted DDT. Christian starts slapping him which annoys Joe. Cage tries to dive on him but wham Joe catches him with a nice kick. There's a bit of an awkward moment where Christian tries a corner powerball but instead they kind of collapse in the corner. Joe's kicking game is really on form tonight. He hits another big kick from the top. Joe hits Christian with a powerbomb into the STF and then Joe turns it into a crossface. They all roll into the referee to break the hold up. As they get up Christian hits the Unpredia which Joe kicks out of. Christian's getting reckless now as he climbs onto Joe's big back and then he gets squashed. Cage is on the ring apron now and Joe suddenly spears him and both men crash to the outside. Not seen that from Joe before. Christian's scared and he tries to bail from the match but he gets put back into the ring. The ref's distracted by all the shenanigans and Joe looks like he has the match won but the ref takes too long to count. Then there's a ref bump and Joe tries to dive but Christian smacks him with a chair. If anything this fires young Joe up and he starts chopping Christian and gives him the muscle buster. The ref is still dead and he only manages to get a two count. Joe tries desperately to apply the Coquina clutch, but Christian rolls through and pins Joe with feet on the ropes. It's a free, so Cage retains. Game over. Easily the best match of the night, but the ending was disappointing. It felt like this should probably have been Samoa Joe's night. If I had to give it a grade, it would be a B. One of Joe's best TNA matches, but it was just missing something. Maybe it was the ending that let it down, I don't know. So that's it, Destination X 2007. Did this show suck Sunny Siaki's ass? Does it belong in the shove it zone? Let me know below. Just a random quick reminder, please donate to the boy Barood. If we can reach $1,000, I will donate a 500 hawk dollars to the boy's cause. He's trying to get over to America or England to show off his wrestling skill, but he keeps eating all the money that he gets. So the plan is I'm going to hold on to the money so he can't spend it on food. And no, I'm not being rude. And if you have a problem with that, I'm just not in the mood. So shut up or I'll smack you one and support Barood.